This is my current laptop that I've been daily driving for about three years now. This is a 13 inch 2012 MacBook Pro with the Retina 1600p display, specifically the MacBook Pro 10,2, and this thing has 8 gigabytes of RAM, an i5 3210M, as well as 256 gigs of storage. So obviously this laptop is getting quite old, and as my workflow has been increasing, it's been getting to the point where I can't even really use this anymore. Before I was running macOS on this, and I'm not much of a fan of macOS, honestly, and also the performance just sucked. It was so slow with macOS on that thing, so I ended up putting Arch Linux on there, and it drastically improved the system performance. It was a lot more snappy, a lot more usable, but there's still a lot of things that I would like to do that I just can't. Like, for example, I can't really record my screen without the CPU skyrocketing to 100%, nor can I really watch 1080p YouTube without it stuttering or lagging or doing something stupid. And there's a bunch of other things about this laptop that honestly make it just kind of hard to daily drive. Thing number one, because the entire chassis is made out of aluminum, and because it just doesn't have adequate cooling, it's, it gets very hot. This thing sucks to really put on your lap sometimes. In fact, it got so hot that it warped my keyboard. You can kind of see some warping around the left side of the space bar and in that area. Now I give this laptop a lot of shit, but there's a couple things I can really give to this laptop. First of all, the screen is amazing. It's a 1610 panel and the resolution is 2560 by 1600. So that makes us a 2K panel. And the colors look great on this display. It's a really nice display, really. And another thing I can give to this machine is the audio, because the built-in speakers are actually pretty decent for a laptop. And this thing has a really nice DAC with absolutely zero noise. It even has a laser coming out of the headphone jack for Spitif, I presume, which I think is really cool. I'm actually quite a big fan of Spitif, so it's really nice to see this on a laptop. Oh yeah, and very quickly before I forget, here's another thing that I just hate about this laptop, and that's just upgradability. There is none. Pretty much the only thing you can upgrade in here is the SSD, and even that you need a, like a very specific Apple type SSD that honestly, that just completely, that doesn't interest me at all. I can't upgrade the RAM, it's completely soldered to the motherboard, and I can't upgrade the CPU because it's also soldered to the motherboard. Thanks Apple, planned obsolescence. But today it's time to forget all of that and build a nice new laptop. <laughs> Alright, so I kind of fell for a meme on this one, but hear me out for a second. For about 50 bucks, I went ahead and picked up a ThinkPad T440p, which honestly is a great price for this laptop because nowadays everybody and their mother wants one, for reasons I will explain later. But the reason why this one was being sold for so cheap is because it had a few issues. Like for example, the F3 key was missing, and also the speakers don't work, alright. And I mean it's dirty, but those are all minor issues that I can very easily fix. So I ordered that and it arrived, and the first thing I noticed is how god awful this damn trackpad was. Actually, I was daily driving it for a little bit before I upgraded the CPU and the rest of the upgrades came in, and that trackpad was freaking terrible. So I ordered a new one on eBay that is better with physical buttons. And yeah, that trackpad is one thing to look out for with these things, because this ThinkPad, well, I mean, this generation of ThinkPads, rather, were the only ones to do this, and... They instantly went back because everybody hated it. So a little bit of info about this ThinkPad. This thing shipped to me with Windows 10 Pro, with an i5-4210M clocked at 2.6GHz, 8GB of DDR3, and a 60GB Kingston SSD. Also, quick side note, there are two versions of the T440p, one that comes with a GPU and one that comes without the GPU. Mine doesn't have the GPU, but the GPU that would have came in here if anybody was wondering is a GT730M with 1GB of video memory, which isn't anything really to boast about by any means, but it would be nice to have. But personally, I don't really need it, so I'm not missing out on much. Also, while I was talking, you might have noticed that the CPU is pinned to 100%. This is a fresh install of Windows 10, it's been doing literally nothing. I have no idea what it was doing, it was probably updating in the background or doing something but if any of you know who I am you'll know that I don't like Windows so I instantly put in some more RAM swapped the 60 gig Kingston drive that was in there for a 256 gig SSD then I popped in my trusty Ventoy USB and instantly started installing Arch Linux so I suppose a lot of you might be wondering all right why Arch Linux and for me at least I like Arch Linux because I like to be able to customize everything that's on my machine with no bundled in bloatware or garbage or anything like that. Also I know how to use Arch Linux really well, I've been using it for the past, I don't know, 5 years. Also Linux has been my main operating system for the past 10 years, I've been using it since 2014. So I'm definitely no stranger to a terminal and I feel very comfortable using Arch Linux. I do not recommend using Arch Linux if you don't have any basic knowledge of Unix or Linux in general. So basically, if you're a dumbass, don't use Arch. If you're looking for something simple, I highly recommend Linux Mint Debian Edition. That is a distro that'll never break on you. It's an actual just works distribution. 
But yeah, I went ahead and installed Arch Linux with Windowmaker and instantly it was so much faster. Honestly, even though the i5-4210M, the dual core quad threaded CPU that's already in this, I probably would have been happy with that as an upgrade, honestly. It was so fast and I was actually able to do most of the things that I was just kind of using it for. It was actually pretty nice. But of course, I'm not going to stop here. I bought a new CPU for this thing. And for the CPU, I went ahead and ordered the i7-4910MQ. Here's some quick specs for that i7. This is a Haswell chip. Obviously, this is fourth generation Intel. And this CPU has four cores with eight threads that's clocked at 2.9 base and has 3.9 turbo with a 47 watt TDP. And for graphics, it's nothing too special. This thing has Intel HD Graphics 4600. So you may be wondering, wow, that's hella inefficient, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess so compared to modern laptops with what they have now. But honestly, this CPU is still pretty comparable to a lot of the newer laptop chips. And sure, a lot of the newer laptop chips consume less wattage, but honestly, it does not seem to be degrading the battery that much at all. I'm on the standard six cell battery, and I still see over six hours of battery life when I'm constantly using it. And you can also upgrade the battery. There's a nine cell battery that's available for this thing as well. So a lot of people think that this is pretty much the end of the line. This is as high as you can go. But what if I told you that you can push this thing even farther? Meet the i7-4980HQ and the keen-eyed among you might recognize this CPU from being in the 2014 MacBook Pro. But if you are lucky enough and if you can find one that's a decent price, you can find one with an adapter board that converts it from a BGA, a ball grid array, to a PGA, a pin grid array, which you can fit in the CPU socket of the T440P. The 4980HQ, instead of being clocked at 3.9 GHz, is clocked at 4 GHz, but it also has Intel Iris Pro graphics, which is actually better than the GPU that comes in the T440P if you get that option, which again is a GeForce GT730M. But if you want to do that, it will work, just good luck finding one. Now let's really quickly touch on the keyboard. Of course the F3 key is knocked off, but I don't really care about that. Uh, this keyboard, one thing that I do care about that I really wanted was a backlit keyboard. I still like the fact that my old MacBook had a backlit keyboard on it, so I went ahead and ordered a backlit keyboard for the T440P as well. And that's another reason why a lot of people like this laptop. This laptop is extremely modular. You can basically swap out every component in this for whatever upgrade you wanted. And you might make the argument, okay, that's pretty much all ThinkPads, right? And I'd say, yeah, you're pretty much right. But the thing that says the T440P above any of the other ThinkPads is that this thing is pretty much even more modular than most other ThinkPads. Like for example, the screen. This screen is pretty shitty. This is the lowest tier screen you can get, but you can just buy a new screen and install it and it will work and it will detect the new screen with the new resolution. Just like that. Some of the T440Ps have a fingerprint reader on the side. You can just replace it and add it in there. Also, don't even get me started on how much storage you could shove in this thing. If you look in the inside, not only do you have the SATA port, but in the top left corner, you also have mSATA, as well as an entire CD drive you could play with. And if you didn't want the CD drive, you could just take it out and put more storage in it. Another thing that really pushed me to get this laptop is the customized BIOSes you can put on here. You can put Core Boot on it or you can put Libre Boot on it. Some of you might be asking, why? And for me at least, I like security. I think security is cool. I think it's stupidly funny that I can have a laptop with an encrypted hard drive and a modified BIOS that completely gets rid of the Intel management engine, which essentially is a backdoor into your computer and has been there since the Intel Core 2 days. But also, it's not just Intel, AMD has their own equivalent. But I think it's cool that I can just completely modify the BIOS and remove all of that, plus add some extra features into my system that I didn't have before. You can even set up a custom boot screen if you compile it into your BIOS, which I think is so cool. I do not have the tools to modify my BIOS this time around, but I definitely think I will make a video on that sometime in the future, because that is something that I do want to do. But anyway, enough yapping. Eventually, I had a ton of parts come in for this thing, and it's time to get this ThinkPad actually fully upgraded. Okay, I've never really done this before, but, you know, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty easy, just because ThinkPads are, you know, notoriously easy to work in. But I'm going to, like, not break anything. I had a bit of a moment installing the keyboard because I thought it was like older ThinkPad designs where the keyboard would come out by you unscrewing the screws at the bottom. But actually, no, I was hella wrong. The little bottom part of the keyboard actually slides and then reveals six small screws, which I probably should have searched up how to actually take apart the ThinkPad before doing it this way, but that's still super cool. But I also messed up because I actually needed to install the trackpad before I installed the keyboard. So I did it all again. But after I got the keyboard and the new trackpad all installed, I went and I installed the CPU. Again, going from two cores with four threads to four cores with eight threads. So I installed that and I got it all up and running. But after I upgraded the CPU, things just weren't working right. All right, let's see 
The moment of truth. Let's see if this actually worked or not, or if I broke something. Oh, there's the backlight keyboard. Uh, all right, take two. I went ahead and plugged in the charger, and I removed one RAM stick. So let's see if this works. Oh, yes. Okay, I also cleared the CMOS as well, just in case. So, all right, let's check this out. There we go, i7-4910MQ. Nice. Okay, so I don't know what's wrong with this other stick that was in there. It worked on the old CPU, but, you know, whatever. Uh, let's get the date and time all set up here. It is definitely not January 1st, 2001. Yeah, I have a 45-watt charger plugged into this right now, so... That's definitely why I'm getting that error. There we go, we're in. Oh, you can see all eight threads here on WM CPU Watch. There we go, look at that, 4910MQ at 3.9 gigahertz. Oh yeah, it's doing just fine. Okay, so uh, I swapped in the little Windows 60 gig SSD that came in here because I'm trying to update the BIOS. Uh, it's not working with the other RAM stick in there. It's only working with one RAM stick and I, that's kind of making me angry. So I figured that I'd go and update the BIOS, and so I went ahead and downloaded the new BIOS that's up here, because this one's actually an older version of the BIOS. Yeah. Wow, okay, that was pretty loud. Even, like, using Windows for the smallest tasks, it's so fucking clunky and awful. Update ThinkPad BIOS. I guess I, I have... What the fuck does this mean? Is it charging or is it not? What does it say when I unplug it? N absolutely nothing. That's it's not any different. Oh, so it won't run off of the adapter because I have the wrong one. I, I only have the 45 watt adapters. I don't have a 90 watt. Oh, the plot thickens. Welcome to W6LLL repeater. The time is 3.35 a.m. this morning. So... I ended up just ordering a 90 watt charger. So the plan is, uh, I'm pretty sure I have to reseat the CPU to get this thing to work, but I'm gonna go ahead and swap back in that 60 gig Kingston SSD so we can boot into Windows and see if we can try actually updating the BIOS again and seeing if updating the BIOS will fix anything. But like right now, straight up, the second memory slot just doesn't work. So it's not the mixed memory, it's definitely, it definitely did work when I had the old CPU in there. So thinking I might have to just reseat the CPU if the BIOS update doesn't work because there was a couple bent pins. I mean, it is in there and it is working, but you know, you never know. Hopefully just updating the BIOS will actually help it and fix it. I'm just gonna go right to the downloads and try updating this thing again. Yeah, so speakers definitely work. Make sure the AC adapter is in, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in. Now we reboot. Fans just ramped up to 100%. Oh, it's flashing embedded controller. That's what it's doing. Dude, what? I do not care. How am I using 2.2 gigs at idle? What is going on? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just shut down this computer and never boot windows on this thing ever again and put my linux back in here and then i'll test the second socket to see if maybe uh, i started working after the bios update although i highly doubt that it will start working after that just because um i really don't think that that was the issue i think it's probably having something to do with the cpu needing to be reseated or something there we go okay it's definitely in there Yep, that's kind of what I figured would happen. It still doesn't work. So let's try reseeding the CPU really quick and seeing if that'll make any difference. There we go. I don't see any bent pins or any reason why this is obviously not working. I'll just reseed it and hope for the best. Really hoping that did something, because if that didn't do anything, I genuinely have no clue what I'm going to do next. I, at this point, I'm past my return window for this CPU, so the stick of RAM is still in the second slot. It was the slot that's having issues. I'm gonna try it again now. Oh, yes, okay. I'm glad that's all I needed to do. Okay, I'm gonna go put in that other stick of RAM then, and then we're, we're, we're fully back. I, I, I have the machine fully built. Okay, that works. Yeah, it just boots to the... It works now, we have 16 gigs of RAM. Isn't that great? All right, so remember when we were on Windows and how it was using like two and a half gigs of RAM at idle? Well, 
right here we're sitting at idle we have some things open like we got this terminal open we got xos view here we got a bunch of dock apps running but we're using 500 megabytes of ram and 205 of that is being used for cash so i don't know who you are i don't care if you hate linux or not but you, you gotta admit that's pretty impressive all right so with everything fully finished let's try playing some games on this okay i don't have a whole lot of games installed on here but there's a few i want to try okay let's just start a local match we'll do assault i like assault now this game i'm expecting to run just fine you know this cs 1.6 anybody that knows the game it's known for running on potato hardware i also am plugged into an external mouse and keyboard but uh yeah i don't have any of my binds but yeah it, it's it, it is here hold on there we go yeah this is smooth 100 fps the entire time it's not like stuttering or doing anything stupid you know my last laptop it couldn't even run this so yeah this is this is pretty nice granted this is a single player server it's there's no nobody else in this lobby let me try joining something that's multiplayer and see if i can maybe bring down the frames a little bit yeah let's see if i can find a server to get into um What's with that? Okay, never mind. Okay, let's play some CS Source. This is another game that I don't expect for it to have a whole lot of issues, especially because, you know, it's a game from 04. But yeah, well, we'll see. Let's run the video stress test and then we'll get in game after that. Hey, you know what? That's, um, that's some good frames. That's some good FPS right there. But yeah, no, it's, it's running great. Yeah, look at that. 202 FPS average. That's pretty good. Let's hop into a server. Oh, all right. So here it's like 150 FPS. I'm look. I'm seeing. Okay, I'm lagging really hard. Internet not the best, but you know it's kind of nice. This is chill. I could totally just play this. But yeah, no FPS not bad here at all. Okay, let's try Slime Rancher. So this game I don't think is native Linux. I'm pretty sure this is running off of Proton. I guess we'll see. All right, so this is Slime Rancher running on, you know, low settings and I mean, it feels fine. I could play this. This laptop is a lot more capable than I thought it would be for gaming, quite honestly. I've never had a good laptop or like a decent laptop. And so gaming on a laptop is just a completely foreign concept to me, believe it or not. But anyway, let's try a different game. I'm joining a very populated server right now. I got like 300 ping, dude. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. Dude, I suck. What? How much did I hit him for? Okay, so I killed that guy. Just the other, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know, I'm just blind or something. I didn't see the other guy. You suck! You suck! I suck. Remember when I was younger, I used to play like nothing but Day of Defeat. Okay, you fucking can't- Is this even a real server? I mean, they play like real people, but it feels like, like no one's talking. Usually when there's servers that are this active, a lot of people are, are talking. Oh my god. Holy! All right, that's probably enough for this game. All right, that's cool. That's like a that was a fully populated server too. That was pretty fun. But at least for now, it's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching this kind of chaotic video. Firstly, I want to say thank you to everybody that's been supporting me on Patreon. It really does mean a lot. And if you would like to become a Patreon member, a link will be down in the description. Like if you liked it, dislike if you hate ThinkPads or if you hate this video, or if you just hate me. I have a lot of other projects coming out soon, so definitely stay tuned.